আমরা স্কুলি শেষটা
So basically, I'd say the traumas we deal with that accumulated. Yeah? So basically, I can say for me, whenever something happens, my first reaction is anxiety. What may go wrong? What will happen? My daughter is driving past five hours. Oh, is she going to get sick? That's so I always need to process this cognitively and tell myself, what is the probability yeah, of something happening? And then I feel OK. But I think many of you who come historically or currently from conflict protected areas may identify similar patterns in your own life. Yeah? Yeah. So basically, when we deal with consequences of a military conflict, yeah, it takes decades or sometimes centuries to get rid of the conflict. As the president has been said to me, yeah, people are affected in minds and hearts and it takes very long time to heal them. So I now like to be uh, <clears throat> a little controversial. That's what I'm going to say. It will take many years and decades to deal with aftermaths of what's happening currently in the world. That who is responsible? I'll try to be controversial here, but <clears throat> please pay attention. But I'm talking here only about the decision, about making the decision to <laughs> attack. Yeah? It's not like in general, but only in uh, taking the decision. So who is more? Yeah? Uh, uh, like, like this is a statement by a man, actually, yeah? who has a lot of experience of so work as a politician, academician, but also uh, as a humanitarian with Red Cross and other war affected areas. So he says, actually, it's mainly men who are responsible for the horrors of war. Yeah? The cultures and institutions that prepare for the organized arms violence. Uh, are predominantly constructed by men, led by men, and built with men. Wow. Okay, so that'll be a little controversial. Uh, Cheryl Sandberg recently, when she was talking at the International Women's Event, she, from Meta, yeah, she said actually that female leaders don't go to war. But is it really so? Is it really so? Because at one side, if we look at the psychological research, it seems to say yes. Yeah. Compared with men, women tend to be more cooperative, empathic. Uh, they are better problem solvers. Yeah. Uh, and boys actually, they are physically more aggressive than girls, and men are more likely than women to be overconfident. And for example, in case of the Russians, where well, Ukraine, many uh, politicians and experts say that like, basically one of the main reasons was Putin's overconfidence here yeah, when he uh, attacked. Ukraine. By nature. Come on. But do those findings apply to the head of state? Uh, there was a very interesting book uh, describing the results of a research where they analyzed every world leader between 1875 to 2004. Yeah. And they found out that actually 36 of the female leaders initiated at least one militarized dispute, while only 30% of male leaders did the same. Yeah, but if you look at absolute figures, it's totally different, yeah. It's like men were responsible like for 694 acts of oppression and 86 wars, while women for just 13 acts of oppression and one war, and what was Indira Gandhi. Yeah. Interesting. That's all Okay, so in recent history, for example, we know that Margaret Thatcher in 1982, actually she responded with military action from Argentina occupied the Falkland Islands against the advice of your male counter of your male advisors. And the thing happened for example in the case of Hillary Clinton in two thousand eleven when she was the US Secretary of State, yeah, and she urged the government to take military action in Libya, yeah. Also against the advice of her military advisors, male military advisors. That's interesting, yeah? Oh, actually, yeah, there's a research that explains this. I said I'll be a little controversial so that you can take up before lunch. <laughs> okay, so it may be uh, connected to the fact that actually the seduction process may weed out, as they say, more feminine women, yeah, and more st and stronger women and take the leadership position. Of course, it's very difficult to be a leader. You really have to be strong to get to the top in the male dominant world. Yes, it's totally natural. Yeah. Uh, but also sometimes women in leadership roles, they have to become a little more, I wouldn't say aggressive, but maybe assertive, 
because sometimes men, men they have those stereotypes. Oh, there's a woman in this position. She is weak, so let us attack her. So sometimes to protect their country so that it doesn't seem more vulnerable, we don't have to act in this way. That's really very interesting, yeah? how difficult it is to be a woman in a leading position. <coughs> and so if we look, actually, this is, the, uh, uh, this is the global state of women's leadership in 2022. And you see that heads of state are less than 1%. Also, like big CEOs, etc., also less than by one percent. But also, on the other hand, if you see like oh, the professions where women are dominating, they are mostly caring professions, like educators, healthcare workers, psychologists, sociologists. So it's very interesting. Basically, men make decisions about attacking other people, yeah? leading to all those trauma that women are dealing with later for decades. It's unfair, yeah. So I think that's uh, the point of what I wanted to make. So we really need to support each other, basically. We need to support those women in leading positions, yeah? because it's very difficult to be up there at the top. Uh, we need, actually, also to promote <coughs> women to take leadership positions yeah, whenever possible, because we need this equivalent presentation. Yeah? And I was so happy to listen uh, yesterday to when the first lady of Cyprus described which great progress have been achieved in Cyprus, yeah, and, and it's incredible, yeah. So we need to mentor young women as well to support them to go to those higher positions, yeah. Also we need to provide conditions enabling women to join the workforce yeah, so that they can also hold public positions. Yeah, and of course we need to provide conditions for young women that are still at home raising their children, yeah, so that later, and they can also uh, fulfill, uh, take more important and meaningful positions in the society. Um, so, yeah, I think that's my basic conclusion. Yeah, so we need women's network, and that's basically what Women's Federation have been doing for years. Yeah, like Global Peace Network, like First Ladies Association, all other organizations. This is actually an attempt to empower women and help each one of us to fulfill our potential so that finally we have the equal representation so that finally we are involved in decision makings on all possible levels from the top yeah, to all, through all the other levels. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alexandra. You didn't really make it easier for us with this complicated <laughs> picture, but it's true. Life is like that, huh? So, uh, you know, when the men are starting to realize that women need to come in power positions, that's uh, the time now also. I, I had a chance to meet Dennis Lekwege, do you know, the doctor from Congo, uh, when he was in Stockholm, and he cannot emphasize enough that it is the strength of women that has carried him also. And now, you know he's running for president now? He is actually not. I don't know if he's still in the running position, I think so. But, uh, so men, they also want to find their true self up. And also uh, the, the more feminine aspects. Yep. I have a wonderful husband at home, James. He's, he's very nice. I'm not so nice. <laughs> so, so, you know, <laughs> it's really true. Yeah. Anyway, enough of that. But now I want to give you questions here to the speakers. Please try to be pointed with your questions. And tell me, tell also who you want to address the question to. Microphone. Not So first of all, thank you all for you. My comment is addressed to Sophia. I know you're studying the effects of climate change, but I'd just like to point out scientifically, climate change is a misnomer. It's like saying, I'm against the change in my body. Climate has always changed. So if we actually get to the real question, are our behaviors on Earth creating a difference in acceleration of change, 
we can start getting to causes. So um, we have to be careful of that. There are many people who don't want us to ask the right questions. And then we can decide whether our behaviors, even this affecting one million satellites have gone up in the world in the last year. This is, sorry, this is a statement or a question. <laughs> <laughs> so, as uh, I mentioned before, climate change is a new phenomenon with uh, several aspects. One of them I concentrated on Gendering equality. I said that uh, I'm not a scientist for the climate change, but I'm, I'm a specialist on gendering equality. And that's why I analyze what are the reasons and how women, what to do, how to act in order to combat <coughs> the climate change. to say something, if you're about free time, you should not take part in this politics. <laughs> because I don't know how it is in other countries, but in England, during weekends, we go to meet people. And it's, it's good, but you know that if you work in the parliament during the week and then especially when I came from Brussels to Finland every weekend, I didn't went to home always at all. I went to meet people. But it's also what would I say? It empowers you. It's, it's, I like it very much. That's why I also because it gave me Rush and power and I say very very much. <laughs> but politics also it's interesting also at the same time. It's very interesting. Every time is is different, every day is different. But then I was seventeen years in the Finnish politics, it was enough, and fifteen years in the European Union Parliament it is enough. I think that you shouldn't stay too too long time in the same place because then you get tired. You only want to be there because, like I say, it's safe if you have been long time parliamentarians. It's also easier to get elected, and, um, and uh, it's safe and. Uh, and um, it's also difficult to change the working place. When I changed from Finnish Parliament to the European Union <coughs> Parliament, I had long discussions with myself because I knew that we had done the elections. I had been re-elected one year before, and then 
I should do to campaign again. If I haven't been candidate in the European Union Parliament, I could have been safe in my place three years still in the Finnish Parliament. So that campaigning is it's interesting, enthusiastic, but at the same time it's also you must be a little bit afraid. And I don't be elected because we never know. And in Finland, especially because it's different from Sweden, we have a personal election. We don't, we, we vote the party, but we vote person. We gave the number to that person. And it's very hard competition also in the, in the party. And sometimes the hardest competition is between in the same party. And it's always good But I think that I'm very grateful that I have been in politics, and I hope that more and more women are interested in common issues. And that's why I say that we need also very hardworking women, because it's also a little bit more difficult for women to um, elected, so we must work hard, but it's worth it. And, and then when you have got your place, you must also help. <coughs> and that's the problem that sometimes, or I would like to say that, that more men are eager to work together with other men, Women are very often not so <coughs> They don't want to work together. Maybe nowadays more and more the time has been changing, but, uh, but before in Finland it used to be only one woman and there were more candidates then it wasn't very nice. The first election for me was like that. But work together campaign together with, in, in the same party with different women and also <coughs> between different parties. Women <coughs> in different parties is good. Then you can also network. Then you can network. And that was my problem in the Finnish parliament. I hadn't networked enough so that I noticed that, that was one reason why I had to finish, because the others, the men, they had networked also already during school time politics. I was totally new for them. And now when I read memories, I noticed that they had no needs other each other and I was totally new in their But it's interesting, it's worth, but it's it's not only so that it's somewhere. <laughs> Thank you very much uh, for that answer. And I take it or understand it like there was the lack of women as also. Yeah. So, um, yeah, do we have any more questions? Hello. Um, first of all, I'm very grateful to be here uh, with you all, and I'm happy to, to be able to join and participate. I'm very. Um, the topic about uh, what uh, uh, Mrs. Gloria. Uh, interested about um, mentioning about this uh, uh, first of all I want I am uh, I am the author of um, the online solar now and um, uh, which is a community based project and it teaches uh, young people 
who manufactured their own solar pump. And uh, a prototype has been created with a long lasting power. And it illuminates the house. And at the same time, it uh, charges mobile phones, which ensures uh, connectivity, um, especially in times of calamities. Because in my country, in the Philippines, uh, we are prone to typhoons. So it is, yeah, it is something practical, but uh, I think it is very uh, useful, especially in the uh, rural areas in uh, poor communities. It also uh, saved uh, electricity bills. So the poor people couldn't afford to pay their electricity bills most of the time. So the, the, the money that uh, they could save uh, in paying the electricity, they could use it for other necessities like buying food. So then it, um, it helps them improve their uh, quality of life. So that's why <laughs> I would like to network with whoever uh, women who are passionate about this uh, sustainable development goals because it is a crucial and, and global issue that needs to be addressed by each one of us. I do believe that if we work together, uh, we, can, we could make a difference. And I also initiated um, a forum for young people. Well, I, I feel inadequate, but I, I, because I was inspired. And so, yeah, we invited uh, young people to, to share their best practices, as well as uh, their visions, their interests, their concern about any topic. So they, and it went well. Thank you so, so much, Thank you so much, Marley. I think Sophia is very happy. <laughs> Thank you very much. This is the best. Uh, yeah, she wants to. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for your position, uh, for your points. Uh, of course, it's a self, it's a start with. It's a place to start with. It's a new phenomenon. Uh, it's something that we face every day, every night from our TVs, and it's very painful for all, or not for our society, but for uh, locally and globally. So we have to do something. Women are the first that they suffer with inequalities. So if we join our voices, we make the network, uh, it will be very uh, helpful to continue with this space to extend and extend and we combat the climate change. That's the action forward. <laughs> so, uh, do we have any more questions? I think this might be the last question. So, uh, my name is Carmen Magallon. I came from Spain. Uh, I belong to the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom. And I have a question and a commentary. The question is, uh, because we are talking about women to be united and the difficulties to do so, uh, maybe it's because we are equal and different. And we have ideologies, religions, in class, different. So, the question is, is there any mothers who you who have the capacity to unite us better than others? And I think so. <laughs> I think, uh, looking at history, that uh, uh, peace is one of these matters. Peace is uh, a matter who has been able to unite women for, uh, because we, uh, we give the human life a priority. And for instance, uh, an example, my commentary is, uh, I went to Colombia, I've been very many times, and I was invited to the second summit, Women and Peace, 
uh, and the women in Colombia were able in, in this summit and the first also to unite 350 organizations to push for the agreements for peace in Colombia. And they were different and they had conflicts between the organization, right? but they prioritize peace. This is, if you think, maybe nature is also one of these matters, who has the, the capacity to unite us, to define the nature. Thank you. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Definitely. We have actually many examples also of mothers being able to take action and bringing the, the powerful men to, to the negotiation table. And you took one example. We also have an example, of course, in Liberia. Yeah. We have a goal that led the organization Women were able to come together from all books, from different religious backgrounds. Mothers were coming together to be able to actually stop the war in Liberia at one point. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, of course, there are many examples. So, uh, with this, uh, this is the end of this session. Uh, thank you so much for everybody that participated. Thank you so much for all the speakers. Thank you very much. And uh, we want to end the session with the a special little uh, awards, but also Mariko Boru has a special gift from Africa. So uh, please go first. We take Sophia first. <laughs>